autophagy is recycling at the cellular level. It is one of the coolest things, at least in my opinion, that our bodies know how to just use unnecessary components of ourselves for fuel. Okay, so we know it's a cool thing, and if you're watching this video, you probably already know what autophagy is to a certain degree. But is there merit when it comes down to longevity? Is there merit when it comes down to quality of life? Is there something we can actually tangibly feel from autophagy? This is where the research gets very interesting. And it has to do with the fact that as we get older, we have a little bit of an overactive innate immune system triggering a potential sort of increase in inflammation that just is there all the time. Okay, and it has to do with cells kind of getting damaged and leaking components and DNA in the immune system dealing with those. So we'll break it all down in a very simple way and we'll get into the nitty gritty of caloric restriction and autophagy's effect on it. So as we get older, we have more damaged cells. Damaged cells leak DNA. Okay, and the DNA should be in the cell. It shouldn't be leaked out, right? So the immune system goes and it deals with that via inflammation because it deals with whatever damaged cell or damaged tissue was secreting the DNA in the first place. Okay, well, what does autophagy have to do with this? Well, autophagy is where the cells, in an effort to maintain energy, will break down unnecessary or damaged components of itself for fuel, okay? So what happens when cells are damaged and they leak particles is it is called a damaged associated molecular pattern or DAMP. And these particles from damaged cells, well, the body has to clean them up and it's the inflammatory response that deals with that issue. So the more damp that we have, the more particles, the more inflammation that we have floating around. One of the ways that we can deal with the damaged particles is through autophagy. Autophagy is allowing those damaged particles to be used for fuel. Now, getting deeper into that, the response that we have to the damaged particles, to the damp, okay, the response that we have is largely driven by something called NLRP3 inflammasome. This particular subset of the immune system activates inflammatory cytokines to deal with the problem. So as we get older, perhaps we have an overaction, an overreaction of the NLRP3 inflammasome, okay? Now the NLRP3 inflammasome is definitely driven quite a bit by the mitochondria and mitochondrial DNA. What I mean by that is as we get older, a lot of the DNA that leaks out is mitochondrial DNA because that's where we're really suffering a lot. That's where we deal with a lot of issues is at the mitochondrial level, okay? So since autophagy really does happen a lot at the mitochondrial level, it's called mitophagy, this is a very good thing. So it's essentially reducing the amount of damp that is released, thereby potentially bringing down that inflammaging, that aging associated inflammatory response. Now we're gonna talk about another study that has to do with caloric restriction here in just a second. Autophagy is mainly associated with fasting in sort of the, I guess, general population. Now autophagy occurs all different times of the day, through all different walks of life, through all different things, right? But autophagy definitely occurs when we're fasting because we are in that point in time where our body is trying to scavenge whatever fuel that it can. Another thing potentially happens when we fast we drive up ketones because we've been without food for so long that our body starts finding fuels from other means, driving up ketones, mainly beta-hydroxybutyrate. Now there is a study that was published in the journal Nature Medicine that demonstrated that beta-hydroxybutyrate or ketones do seem to block the activity of the NLRP3 inflammasome. So that means that when the NLRP3 inflammasome is going to trigger an inflammatory response, it may not trigger as much of an inflammatory response, which is good for those of us that are dealing with an overactive immune system as we get older. After today's video, I put a link down below for Element Electrolytes. They are not sweetened with erythritol. Element Electrolytes are 1,000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, and 60 milligrams magnesium, but that link down below gets you a free sample variety pack with any purchase of Element Electrolytes. So whether you purchase their sparkling, whether you purchase their stick packs, 
or whatever, you get a free sample variety pack and that's exclusively using my link down below. That is drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. Again, drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. Really interesting stuff. They curb my appetite entirely, but I also have them in a fasted state and I sip on them during my fasted workouts because I feel like I actually get replenished, but I also get my cravings satisfied. So that link is down below in the description. Now the caloric restriction side is super interesting. Obviously fasting is going to be at some point in time caloric restriction, right? Maybe not over the course of a net day, depending on how much you eat, or over the course of a week, depending on how much you eat. But for a period of time while you are fasting, you are definitely putting yourself in a caloric deficit. Like if you're going 20 hours without eating during that 20 hour period, you are absolutely in a deficit. So a caloric restrictive diet, as the journal Cell had demonstrated, can actually affect mitochondrial health. It modulates the mitochondrial metabolism because you have this stress response. And the stress response is coming because there's no food. There's no food, so you have all this stress that is forcing an adaptation to occur at the mitochondrial level. What adaptation is that? Well, it's forcing the cells to become better at utilizing fuel in a more efficient way. Okay, so that means it can get by with less. If the mitochondria can get to a point where it's leveraging fats as a fuel source, this is a very good thing. And this happens when you're fasting, right? Because what happens then is you have less reactive oxygen species and less overall stress that's occurring. Simply put, fats oxidize cleaner than glucose oxidizes. So the more that we can get ourselves into that situation, we put ourselves in a better state. But arguably, it's the caloric restrictions effect on just making the cell stronger as a hormetic stressor that really seems to cast the benefit. Because remember, if a mitochondria is, for lack of a better term, weak, then that weak mitochondria has a higher likelihood of becoming damaged and leaking DNA and subsequent inflammatory response. But if a mitochondria has been, let's just say, hardened or strengthened or become more resilient as a result of dealing with caloric restriction and getting stronger, it has less likelihood to become damaged and to leak those particles that thereby trigger the inflammatory response. So no matter which way you look at it, caloric restriction is probably a good thing for this whole inflammaging piece. But how it ties in with autophagy and how it ties in with ketone production during a fast and how it ties in with these other effects of potentially fasting, yeah, that really does seem promising in that category. But again, I have to, cannot overemphasize, I am not a doctor, I'm some guy on the internet, and the world of longevity research and aging research is just, it's wild. And it's not to make you live for as long as you can, it's to improve the quality of life so that you can enjoy the life that you are living. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.